As Rome was not built in a day, Iowa State was not built in its first wooden walls, or its first brick, or its first marble, or even in its latest concrete. In fact, Iowa State has not yet been built. But the dust of its present will settle to the strength of its future and the time-defying monument of its past. But now the dust, the busy dust of growth, the dust flying out from the chisels that are carving the biggest model of education in our history, 1963, our dustiest, our biggest year to date. We get lost in it and stumble through ruts and detours, but we cough our way through it and get to work more or less as usual. There is a lot of construction going on, but we can look back and there was a lot of construction in the past. Since my days as a student, things like the Memorial Union, the library, the physics building, the veterinary uh, clinic, the dairy industry building, practically the entire residence hall's development, and the whole complex of the uh, Ames Laboratory of the Atomic Energy Commission have been built on this campus. Future development uh, will be on the periphery of the campus. The traffic plan is to provide uh, outer belt drives and parking areas, preserving the central campus for pedestrian traffic and classroom facilities. This uh, poses a problem on travel time between classes. And for that reason, I think we will see more high-rise buildings uh, within the periphery because it will not be possible for students to change classes in the 10-minute period allowed. This year, we are engaged in the largest building program in our history. We have under construction right now more than $15 million worth of buildings. We have $12 million worth in the advanced planning stage on which we expect to receive bids early in 1964. Over $15 million just to keep up. And yet at the same time, to hack away at the bedrock and carve out the future. Let's take a closer look at some of the newest faces of our statue. True to our traditional spirit, we work toward the development of quality livestock products. Foremost among our projects is the new Animal Industries Building. Classrooms, research and teaching laboratories for the departments of Animal Science, Poultry Science, and Dairy Science. And true to our pioneering spirit, Iowa State showed the way in educational radio more than 40 years ago and launched the nation's first educationally owned and operated television station back in 1950. The new WOI building contains studios, offices, and services for WOI AM, FM, and TV. In addition, its facilities are designed to aid in training advanced television students. The building and its facilities will allow Iowa State to develop excellent closed-circuit television instruction 
to supplement and improve regular classroom teaching. The project was financed from WOI TV reserves. No state funds were used. Another modern bulwark is the spacious engineering building adjoining chemical engineering. Here are more of the ever vital classrooms and laboratories as well as new offices of nuclear engineering, chemical engineering, and engineering science. And the overcrowded labs and classrooms of the chemistry building can breathe more freely as they empty their overflow into the chem building addition. The addition of the physics building is one of which we can be especially proud because the National Science Foundation granted one million dollars toward its construction. A vote of confidence from the nation for science here at Iowa State. Most of the six stories of the addition will be used for graduate research but will include four large undergraduate teaching labs. This building will strengthen our programs in astrophysics, classical physics, and physical meteorology. And the drowsy petals of the formal garden will be awakened by the pneumatic hammer when it will tear away portions of the wrinkled face of Old Botany Hall. Here the Plant Science Building will house the departments of Botany, Plant Pathology, Forestry, and possibly Genetics. There will be 22 large undergraduate classroom laboratories and 72 research laboratories. Cemented onto the Agricultural Engineering Building are the new quarters of industrial education with new labs for woodworking, metalworking, auto mechanics, and electronics. And looming over the tip of the campus, sprawling as a Roman arena, is the new men's gymnasium. It will allow better scheduling of intramural events and greater facilities for them with six basketball courts, six handball courts, two squash courts, and 150 showers. But its central feature is one of the three best swimming pools in the nation and the best in the Midwest. 75 by 50 feet with a 32 by 50 foot diving pool. And there's space for 800 people to watch. The cornerstone of the new atomic reactor, which the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission has just built for four and a half million dollars, lies just a mile and a half northwest of the campus. The reactor's 5,000 kilowatt thermal power output makes it one of the most powerful research reactors in the nation. But not only do students need more working space, they also need more living space. More research means more graduate students. So we raised the old international house and even as it burned, it was still being used for an educational purpose, firemanship training. And on the ashes, we poured the concrete for a graduate dorm. Here, an eight-story tower will house 122 women and 268 men. Later additions will make room for a total of 1,000 students. The biggest dorm project will go up on what was the poultry farm at the south end of Welsh Avenue. But not all of our concrete is rising upward. Some of it will stretch along the ground as new highways and roads.
Remember the old one-laner with its one-way signal under the railroad on Stang Road? Now it's been changed into a four-laner with no signal. And the big road job was finished in September. Highway 30 has burst its forms all through campus town and has poured like lava across four lanes. Signal lights are progressing. Anyone driving at a constant speed can make every green light all along the way. At the expense of tradition, however, for the old bridge for the daredevils at the end of Lake Laverne had to give way to a new one of more solid footing and safe handrails. But the bottleneck S curves at the intersections of Lynn Avenue and Morrill Drive have been pulled out to a free-flowing straight line. The cost of the new and wider Lincoln Way is borne 50-50 by state and federal government. All in all, 12 projects, and all of them needed just to keep up. But keeping up is also growing up. And if we were to say that Iowa State is built, we'd be saying that Iowa State is finished and dead. But we are alive, and we are carving new faces on our monumental statue of education, new lives. by this. We give the past more dignity, the present more life, and the future more